Good morning. It is Sunday. You know what that means? <sighs> yeah, it's stacking Sunday. I'm not that energized today. I'm uh, I'm a bit sick. I uh, caught the flu, I think, and uh, I've been spending the entire weekend so far in bed. But uh, I thought it's Sunday. It's stacking Sunday. I need to stack something. So I need to get out of my bed, put on some clothes. Don't want to sit here in my PJs. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so uh, whoop, almost got hit by the USB cable. So it's time again to uh, connect my hard drive and see what 2023 data I still have laying around on that drive which has not yet been stacked and then we're going to stack it in Cyril to see whether or not it's worth it. <laughs> so let's connect it and then let's see what happens. my other screen I will be sharing the stuff so you can follow me down there so 2023 data for video there we are so last week we did the M81 M82 boats and cigar galaxies and we found out that the data I have is okay, but the way that I stacked it, nah. It needs a very different approach there. Um, I'm not going to bore you with yet another video on that same topic. Nope, it's time for a new target. Let's see if I have data which has not been stacked yet. So this is M101 and apparently I stacked it. Oh yeah, it was because there was this uh, supernova going on in M101. Okay, let's see. M106 then. Oh yeah. M106 is a target that I uh, intended. Or actually, I still intend to do that. But there's a collaboration uh, attempt on it where we have many people joining me, sharing uh, their data. And uh, we got to, this is the uh, latest test that I stacked. And I remember that uh, somebody in the group had uh, a much more um, a much better result that I uh, got but the uh, the main target here is this H alpha streamer you don't see that that often in uh, in the images that people take of M106 but we shot incredible amounts of data on it and stacked it all next up Melot 15 which is the heart of the heart nebula It seems that that has not been stacked yet. So let's go and let's see if this data is good enough. So we'll start up Cyril. Let me sip my tea. I'm usually a coffee guy, but whenever I feel like this, I drink tea. Here we have Cyril. As uh, mentioned before, I'm running the development version. Okay, let's uh, just drag those images in. Which, with what telescope did I do that? With the edge nine and a quarters. Okay. That amazes me that I didn't stack it already. So this is the edge nine and a quarters, melot 15. I've got 60 images of 
180 seconds each. So how does that look? Don't see anything on the initial uh, subs and an auto stretch. What's it? What's this? Oh, cool! A triplet of stars. <laughs> the Bayer matrix is creating a nice moiré pattern here. That will be gone after we do the calibration. So this is the uh, the the. ASI 294 MC Pro camera, so I'll need matching darks, uh, calibration, and 180 seconds, I said. Yep, let's use these, and I need flats. Do I have flats in my latest flats folder that are still applicable? thought I had flats as well. Let me see on my hard drive. Hmm, I guess not. Then the closest flats to those are the ones I took on the 10th of January. Okay, then uh, I'll use those. So I had that also here. That is flats 10th of January. Not the L extreme ones, the no filter ones. Did I select the one? Yeah. Okay, after this process, I need to have it debayed. So we'll then also get rid of that uh, pattern that we just saw. Let's calibrate. You might be asking yourself why I am not using the scripts functionality of Cyril. Well, for my purposes, I think doing it my way the manual way is just as quick plus it doesn't require me to copy over files in certain folder structures because that is what the scripts require right it needs to have lights biases uh, darks and uh, flats so I need to then copy over all those files into those folders then run the script and by the time I'm done with setting up the folders, I would have been already done in my manual way, which is why you see me do that all the time. So now we have uh, uh, debated it as well, and we have calibrated the image. So if I now zoom in on it, there is noise, which is usually not uh, normal for uh, my data at least. But uh, that pattern uh, is, is gone. Here see, we see that nice triplet of stars again. I start to see the structure that is the heart of the heart. If I go into the histogram stretch, which is extreme stretching, you can see that there is indeed some nebulosity hidden there. And I'm sure that the registration and after that stacking will bring that out more clearly one minute 37 seconds later there the registration is done so we should now have a plot that shows us the quality of the individual subs it all nicely jumps around a certain center around the 7.4 mark which is in the full width half maximum i think a fairly typical value for me yeah you know what this is taking too long i could have probably all uh stacked them but yeah let's go with the data that cyril provided us and let's just go into stacking so i have now one image excluded ah i'm going to just ignore what i just said i'm going to stack them all there we have said it done it here we go. Okay, let's uh, go and do some small tinkering on it. One of the things that I like to do first is make sure that it is uh, oriented correctly. Well, I, I can just guess which orientation it needs to be, but I can also use the plate solving functionality. So I, uh, I am going to do that. The camera uh, 
already uh, has the focal length and the pixel size and the right ascension and declination information in the FITS file. Uh, it's by the way not the camera doing that, it's the ASI Air which I use to take these images. So let's uh, do the plate solve and I had the flip image when if needed uh, tick mark on. So now it is flipped. So uh, now I have the data as it should be. Uh, now I want to rotate it as well because this object I think looks best uh, in this orientation. So what can we do with this data? Well, for one, I think these stars are pretty um, obnoxious. <laughs> no, the stars are pretty visible in, uh, in this image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a uh, star removal process on it. And then we can uh, do the processing of that nebulosity separate from the stars. And we then later can put in back the stars. Because if we stretch with the stars, then well, these stars also get larger and larger. If you look at the linear view, those stars are just dots. But uh, in the auto stretch view, well, they're no longer dots. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. And there was somebody asking me on my one of my previous videos why I did uh, the generalized hyperbolic stretch transformation before I did StarNet. Uh, well, that might be a mistake on my side uh, in that case, but uh, it also sometimes is necessary. But let's go and try star processing, star net, star removal, before we uh, do anything. Um, I would want to click the pre-stretch uh, function uh, in, the, uh, in the image if, uh, if it doesn't uh, uh, work. But uh, let's first try it without. The reason why I did that uh, stretching before StarNet back in, uh, in one of those previous videos, I think it was because StarNet was unable to clearly or cleanly remove the stars because it didn't have enough information on certain stars to, uh, to remove them. And as a result, it made a mess. And when you then stretch the image just a tiny bit, then StarNet has enough information. And I think on that particular video, and it was the uh, I messed up video even, I think I messed up once more there by doing that generalized hyperbolic stretching completely before StarNet. It, it's not bad practice or something, it's just, yeah, you don't get the most out of the process when you do it that way. As I mentioned, we want to uh, stretch the nebulosity without having those stars getting even more bloated. So, uh, yeah, when you already stretch and then remove the stars, you already have a little bit bloated stars, perhaps. Not sure if that was the case in my previous uh, image, which was, by the way, also the heart nebula. This is the center of that uh, image. Perhaps I can uh, show it in the end and compare it with the results we had then. Ah, well, great example. This is what I meant. Now we see that StarNet has made a mess. It knew where the stars were. It did try some removal, but it didn't succeed. As you can see, it, yeah, it made art, but in a non-pleasant way. Let's go to StarNet removal once more, but now I tick the pre-stretch linear image. 
what it does, it applies, well, it says in the tooltip, right? So it applies a small uh, mid-tone transfer function, uh, stretch, which is, I think, simply the uh, histogram uh, transformation function. So similar to what we have here, it simply does a small stretch for a certain uh, amount. So if I put this in linear, it, stretch it stretches it to a certain extent and then, uh, well, it's happy with uh, starting the StarNet process. So let's do that. So we pre-stretch the image and then we let StarNet do its thing. So here we see it applied a stretch with these values. Let's see what it does now. But this was exactly the point. And even with the pre-stretch function, when the stars are just too dim or faint or whatnot, then I, I tend to experience that StarNet is uh, making art where I wanted it to do awesome stuff. Not that art isn't awesome, but it isn't the art that I was looking for. Sorry, my fever is uh, taking over me. It's always nice to stack with the sound of rain on your window. It has been so long again that I've been imaging. I did, did do some uh, nightscaping. Yeah, I was looking for the word. I did some nightscaping the other day. It was Monday just to scout a location. I'll uh, show the image uh, uh, somewhere. I got distracted because I see yet another art piece. What is this? So this is uh, what we consider a uh, starless image. Can't do anything with this, right? So I think I'm once again going to do that stretch myself. Okay, so this is the linear stretch. It was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up. It, uh, I'm... Uh, I'm doing things completely wrong, I think. Let's go back to the stacked image. Let's do that plate solve once more. Astrometry, image plate solver, okay. Close, rotate. And this we're going to save as my lot 15 start. This is our starting point. There. And now I'm giving StarNet one more chance to do it with the pre-stretch uh, pre setting on. I think I did it wrong. Can't think anymore. It's. I think it's very warm in here. Although I think it's me. A colleague this week told me when I asked the similar question: "Is it warm in here or is it me?" He said, "No, you're hot." Yeah. <laughs> We're almost there. Will it be a green mess once more? Yes. So, I'll open up our Melot 15 start image and I'm going to do what I did in the previous uh, time. Um, yes, I'm going to do the generalized hyperbolic stretch and perhaps I want to do, yeah, first I go into color calibration. That might have also been a reason why. Let's untick the flip now because I don't want the plate solve that happens to once more mess with the rotation and stuff. So 
Oh, a photometric color calibration has been applied. So if I now go to the auto stretch, it should look a little bit more pleasing to the eye. I think it does indeed. Um, and if I go into a bit too much, let's do this. Bam. And now I'm going to uh, run Starnet one final time. Now I'm not going to pre-stretch the image. I've stretched it already manually. Go. Do your thing. Make us proud. Don't end up in a green mess. If you know what I'm doing wrong, <laughs> let me know. Because... I'm uh, eager to learn as well. Was it the photometric color calibration that I should have done before those other attempts of Starnet? Was it the green background tricking Starnet into believing things were stars and I don't know. This is what we expected. Great. Okay, so now we have a starless image. Now we can go into the stretching part and uh, work with this. So let's uh, bring up the local stretch once more and we're going to stretch this even further. And here we see the heart of the heart nebula. We also see some artifacts coming in from uh, from Starnet. Perhaps we need to dial down on the local stretch. It doesn't really affect it much. What if we play with the... Yeah, let's play with the symmetry point. If we get this part of the image as the symmetry point, yeah, this is what I want. Then we can stretch this out a bit. Yeah, let's apply it. Let's switch it over to the uh, linear stretch. So we can uh, shift the black point and then I go and make sure that this uh, bump moves to the left but without clipping data. I don't want to lose data. So we move this and now I see that the data clip is rising. So I'm going to stay just in front of where it starts clipping data. So now it's at zero. Let's apply that once more and go back to the generalized hyperbolic stretch transformation. I click here on where the hump of the uh, the histogram is intersecting this diagonal line. Not sure if that helps or, or whatnot, but that's how I found that this uh, tool is uh, is helping me and now i'm looking at that point where stuff gets uh, well too funky as i can see here this star here is apparently uh, well i need to dial that down a bit i think i go with this perhaps we can shift the black point even further now I'm not going to look so much at what we lose. I think I like this view. So uh, let's save this off as our starless start. <laughs> and now I can go into the Star processing, star recomposition. 
and I can load that last file. This is the image that I had already loaded. So there it is again. And now I can also load the star mask and that should be this one. So the generalized hyperbolic transformation, uh, we can uh, try stretching it some more now. We don't want to uh, intensify the, the stars any further. I think I just need to uh, apply this. And then we have an image. We can do a few other stuff, things to it. I see some uh, green in the uh, in the background. And now that green is gone. And uh, yeah, I think I would then bring it over to Photoshop and do some final finishing touches on it, and then uh, it will be done. This uh, video is taking too long already, I think uh, we need to call it quits. Next week hopefully I will have another Stacking Sunday video with a more healthy person in view of the camera. Sorry for this. And uh, yeah, I have some uh, devices uh, up for testing or devices, I, I have a device for testing but I want to compare it to uh, my ASI Air Plus. It's the uh, Ioptron iMate and uh, I'm really curious whether or not that will allow me to do things in a similar easy way as I am used to with my ASI Air units. So uh, that is something that will come up anyway. I also still have that video about January to complete mayhem this YouTube thing <laughs> but uh, thanks for watching see you next time